You know what? I'm not exactly sure what kind of look this is, but I'm feeling it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I didn't do a thumbnail. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I almost forgot to do this video, but we're doing a 4x4 for Wet n Wild Cosmetics. If you haven't seen any of my other 4x4s, basically what I do is go through a brand and talk about what I think their 4 best products are and what their 4 worst products are. I've been testing out a whole bunch of products since I did my full face of Wet n Wild, and now I've got my notes right over here, and I'm ready to tell you guys what I think are the best and worst products from the brand. So before we jump into the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like this 4x4 series, and if you haven't and you'd like to, I really hope you would consider subscribing and hitting that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. I feel like the look also matches my Slytherin mug. I found this at Marshalls. I was so happy. I normally don't find too much like Slytherin stuff. So thank you, Marshalls. Okay, so we're going to alternate between a good product and a bad product. So let's go ahead and start off on a positive note with a product that I think is incredible from the brand, and that is all of their eyeshadow palettes. Wet n Wild has an incredible eyeshadow formula, which really makes me think long and hard about like all these other brands that are charging so much for eyeshadow when there are some great formulas from Wet n Wild. I have a couple of their palettes. This is the Not A Basic Peach palette right here, and this is their Comfort Zone palette over here. They also have some smaller palettes. They do quads, they do duos. This is pretty much the smallest palette that I'll reach for. I have an issue with reaching for smaller palettes. But these are just so buttery and creamy. The metallics are blinding. Oh, I love their eyeshadows, seriously. The only downside to these is that I know in my area, none of my drugstores will actually carry these, so I always have to go online to buy these. But if you're in an area where your CVS's, your Walgreens, your Walmarts actually stock makeup, because none of mine do, you can find these so affordable and uh, I love them. I just saw Emily Noel did a video where they have a whole bunch of new palettes in like this 10 pan packaging and I need to get my hands on them. I do. They have one that looks like a dupe for the Lila palette, the Natasha Denona one, which whew, we could do a video on that. I do have the Lila palette, but I'm just excited that they came out with more palettes like this because they're so good. Switching gears to something I don't think Wet n Wild does well, and that's whenever they do a limited edition lipstick or eyeliner. All of their limited edition lipsticks are like glittery and metallic and none of their metallics look that great. I know they'll call them lip toppers but they don't look that good and they don't wear that good and they're not comfortable. Same with their eyeliners. They come out with a whole bunch of limited edition eyeliners. I've not liked any of their colorful eyeliners. They're not really pigmented. They don't turn out that great. And the packaging is just very cheapy on those. Like, I know Wet n Wild, you're not going to buy Wet n Wild for the packaging, of course. But, like, this is sturdy and this is durable and I feel like I'm not going to, like, destroy it whenever I'm using it. But when it comes to, like, some of their eyeliners and stuff, I feel like I could snap them in half when I'm just holding them. The next product that I really, really enjoy from Wet n Wild are their contouring palettes. These are their Mega Glow contouring palettes in the shade Dolce de Leche and Caramel Toffee. I mentioned both of these because I like one powder from both of them. Like, if I need to depot this and, like, make my Mega Glow contouring palette because I really like the face powder from the Dolce de Leche palette because I feel like it's a little bit better at um, brightening up my under eyes because this palette it's a little bit darker and a lot more yellow which is going to work better if you're of a deeper complexion but for me this one works a lot better but I do like this darker shade right here as a contour it is a really nice contour so my perfect palette would be this face powder with that one yeah, not gonna happen. But <laughs> I do like both of these powders. This also just makes a really good all-around face powder. Uh, and these are also fairly big. Like, this is the size of my face. This is the powder. It's a large amount of product that you're getting. They're very affordable and they're blendable. So the, both of the contours blend out really nicely. So even though they're called contours, if your skin tone allows it, if it looks good in your skin tone, you can also use it as a bronzer. I just prefer to use them as the contour because I think they look a little bit better like that. The next product that I'm really not a fan of is their concealers. I've 
tried a few of their concealers none of them really work well and I think it's because their shade range on their concealers is kind of blah you can never really I could never really find a shade that worked well for me I, I had kind of the same issue with their foundation but their foundation has a nice shade range I just feel like that's not reflected in their concealers as well the concealers never really wore that well and they oxidized a lot so even if you could kind of sort of find a shade that worked for you it would oxidize and Oh, no, I've not had a good experience with their concealers. I wouldn't really recommend them. There are so many great affordable concealers out there. I just don't think that's a thing Wet n Wild does well. Something that Wet n Wild knocks out of the park is their highlighter formula. They have some highlighting palettes that I really enjoy. This is the Mega Glow highlighting palette that I just picked up for this holiday season. You've got so many different shades. They have, I haven't even tried counting how many shades of highlighter they have. I have a bunch over here that I've depotted from like their regular Mega Glow highlighting packaging. And they're just so buttery and blinding and you really can't go wrong. They have so many shades, they're super affordable. And I feel like they're like, the creme de la creme of the drugstore highlighting game. I feel like no matter what skin tone you are, you can find a highlight that works well for you in this line and that's incredible. In each one of their pans, you're getting an incredible amount of product. I have never hit, I've only hit pan on like two highlighters ever in my life, but I feel like you would be set for years if you picked up one of their palettes or if you picked up two of just these individually you would be set for so long these can range from super blinding editorial looks to very nice subtle highlights so i feel like no matter what highlight you're looking for you will find it in their collection another product i really don't like from wet n wild are their mascaras i've only found one that i like and it's their mega length mascara that a lot of people use for the lower lash line i just use it normally on my upper lashes but I feel like for the most part, my issue with their mascaras are their wands. Their wands always irritate my eyes. And I don't know, I either always poke myself with them or when I'm putting them on, I, I feel irritation along my lash line. So I don't know if maybe it's something in their formula that's also doing that. But I do have that one mascara that I did like. And the wand is super long and skinny on that one. So I've never had any issues with that. Which is what leads me to believe that maybe it's just the wands themselves that just don't work well with my eyes. But I have tried out a few mascaras from them. The formula didn't really work well with my lashes. They kind of weighed down and were kind of clumpy and I'm just not a huge fan of that look. I mean, it is a look. I'm just not a huge fan of it. All right, and the last product that I will rave about from Wet n Wild until the day that I die are their liquid catsuit lipsticks, but only a few of them. Only a few of them. My absolute favorite of all time is Rebel Rose. If you've been anywhere near my channel, you will already know this. I love this shade. I will use it forever and ever. The other two shades that I really love and I think just are amazing are Nudie Patootie and Missy and Fierce. So I feel like with these, you've got a good little wardrobe right here. This nude is almost a little bit too light for me, so I feel like unfortunately it's not going to work well for a lot of people, but Wet n Wild does have a large range of these Liquid Catsuit lipsticks. I would recommend trying to find a deeper shade, just stay away from their metallic shades. Just don't even look at them. But if they do have a darker kind of nude shade, I would recommend you try that one out. Because they're just regular matte ones. Very good. These are just my three favorites that I keep reaching for over like my Fenty lipsticks, over my Jeffree Star lipsticks. I, these are so good. And the last really meh product from Wet n Wild that I'm going to discuss today was a fail that I mentioned in my Full Face of Wet n Wild. And that is their Photo Focus Pressed Powder. I've never had that bad of an experience with the pressed powder before. It wouldn't even come off onto my brush. After that video, I tried scraping off a little bit and using it as a powder and it was splotchy. It, it actually ruined my foundation. Oh, I cannot get behind that powder. I really don't recommend that powder. Please stay away from that powder. I'm gonna do something that I haven't really done in one of these videos before and kind of throw in an honorable mention. This is a product that I mentioned in my products that I'm upset that I liked video. I'll throw that up in the cards if you did miss it. But this is a product that I really love the formula, but I, 
I don't have a shade that really works well for me. And that is the Ultimate Brow Mascara. This only comes in three shades. There's like an auburn, a blonde, and a dark brown. And by dark brown, they basically mean light brown. But I love everything else about this formula. The wand is the perfect size for your brows. This formula holds down all of my unruly brow hairs and keeps them in line like a good drill sergeant <laughs> all day. It just holds everything in place. It doesn't bleed out onto the rest of my face. It's... <sighs> This would have been my holy grail brow product if it had come in black or clear. But I have tried their clear brow gel and I did not like it. But this one is so good. I just wish it was black. You know what? I need to find, I don't know, can I tint this? Is there a way I could just put in like a black mixer in here or something? I don't know. I'm going to do some investigating because I really like this product, but I wish I could find a better shade. So thank you guys so much for watching this 4x4. Let me know down below what is your favorite and your least favorite product from Wet n Wild and what brand do you want to see me do a 4x4 on next. Thank you again and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.